Welcome, welcome back to this channel. This is Unfilter Forex with me, yours truly, Clement. And today, in this video, we'll be looking at the qualities of a good economic calendar. I've seen you guys, okay, some traders I know they use different economic calendars, and that's one of the major contributors as to why most people don't trade the news or just don't understand the news altogether the economic calendar if you watched the previous video you do remember i talked about the tools of fundamental analysis and the first one was the economic calendar so yeah if you're using the wrong tools of course fundamental analysis will be hard for you so today we're looking at the qualities of a good economic calendar and once i'm done with this i'll look at calendar you should use and the calendar you should not even look at let's start qualities of a good economic calendar it's presented by me number one comprehensive coverage a good economic calendar should cover a wide range of economic events and indicators from various countries and regions it should include key data releases such as GDP growth, inflation rates, employment figures, interest rate decisions, and more. This is usually the average economic calendar, the most common ones. They usually have comprehensive coverage. Real-time updates. The calendar should be updated in real-time or as close to real-time as possible. Economic data releases are time-sensitive and Having the latest information is crucial for making informed decisions in financial markets. Some calendars usually update the data late, so you're going to see it a bit late, like a minute or two later than the time of the release, which shouldn't be a big problem, but it's a big problem if you're trading the news. In this case, for example, mm, when you're looking at an economic release like the NFPs or the CPI that's something that of course real-time updates well, a real-time update would come in handy accuracy and reliability the data provided in the economic calendar should be accurate and sourced from reliable official channels errors and discrepancies in the data can lead to incorrect market analysis and trading decisions yeah this is very important this is kind of under the same point with real-time updates because when an economic release occurs like let's say the nfp for example if the actual number is 250,000 jobs for the u.s if the u.s added 250,000 jobs in the month of june for example then your economic calendar is showing 150 and it showed it late Oh, that's that's really embarrassing, especially if you already told your guys it's one. You are saying one fifty. No, that's not good. So you need to use an economic calendar that is accurate and reliable. The info is released on time, and yeah. The next one, user-friendly interface. The calendar should have a user-friendly interface that is easy to navigate. It should allow users to filter information based on their preferences, time frames, and countries of interest. Historical data access. The ability to access historical data is valuable for conducting backtesting, analyzing trends, and gaining insights into how past economic events have influenced the markets. Clear and concise presentation. The presentation of the economic calendar should be clear and concise with important details easily visible such as the event description previous data forecasted data and actual data once released next ones insightful analysis some economic calendars may offer additional analysis or commentary on the potential market impact of specific events while this is helpful it should be presented objectively and backed by sound analysis time zone adjustments since economic economic events occur in different time zones a good economic calendar should allow users to adjust times to their local time zone preventing confusion and missed opportunities okay now let's go to the economic calendars 
here we are these on look look just here top top left of my screen these are the main economic calendars we're looking at today i'm going to start with this one forex factory i hate this calendar anyone who's using this calendar is probably not good at trading the news because everyone who i know trade the news everyone who i know that analyzes fundamentals none of those guys use this calendar because of how shitty it is so we're going to look at it right now so you can see first um, the major the major downsides about using this calendar is a user-friendly interface all other stuff it's it's really good with other stuff but the user friendly interface is just not there it's not easy to use this calendar to analyze the news especially since yeah first you can see that the writings are very small and the spacing is too big and these columns no these are rows these rows haven't been clearly separated so if you follow this release like that it might be hard for some guys to track the one release with their eyes and yeah it's too the numbers are very spacious spaced they're too spaced it's just not good to use another big downside is this thing is not a link let's use let me use this pen this thing is not a link this name the name of the release is supposed to be a link such that you can click the link and go to the release itself and analyze major details about the release and then these two st things here they're separated and it's not supposed to be like this you can see once you click here you can see the history the historical performance stories about this release and the spec the specifics the source measures what usual effect frequency this is a very good arrangement but it's not in the right place it shouldn't be here this thing should be a link open it into a new tab and show all that info and then here again now this is a chart which is very weird because the chart and the historical data are supposed to be together i don't see the need for having these two here so this calendar in general it's not good um i'm only looking at the major downsides that are visible right now of course there are others such as um these releases sometimes they are mismatched they're mislabeled i mean some releases are highlighted as high impact events but they are not high impact events so this economic calendar in general it's a very bad one you shouldn't use it since some people i see some people use this another major downside about this one is the timing here it's oh my goodness yeah you can see this calendar is too it's not good for quick access because yeah anyway you, you'll see a good one you'll see the time zone when you need to adjust the time zone where is the time uh -huh. wait i can't my god how do people use this thing okay let's go to another calendar this is the worst right this is the worst among the famous ones not the worst in existence but among the famous ones this is the worst calendar to use people like using this i've seen because it just highlights in red the important releases this is the only reason why i have heard people use this calendar they use it because yeah, you can just see the major releases and it's easy for someone to hi highlight them yeah if you want to change the time zone it opens into a new tab which is very wrong it shouldn't do this it should be easily quick accessible quickly accessible oh, let's go to this one now this is investing.com this is the economic calendar i use if you're a visitor frequent visitor to this channel you know this is the one i use one major importance why i use this one is these stars there's a three star event which is supposed to mean it's a high impact event and two star moderate volatility and the one star there is no one star event here since i applied the filter to show only the moderate medium importance and high impact events yeah so as you can see this calendar is like that 
if you want to change the time zone of course you can see here it's you just click there and you can select the preferred time zone you use i prefer to use the greenwich mean time or gmt time yeah this is the one i prefer to use mostly and then here you can see the navigation is easy if you want to see yesterday's releases you just click on yesterday it comes yesterday was a sunday there were no events today monday these are the events tomorrow tuesday you can see even the date is very clear here these are the events to expect for tomorrow and the actual forecast and previous they have been well aligned and the rows are clearly marked such that and it's now well enough so that you can see this is the actual one releases the actual will be displayed here immediately the forecast and the previous data and you can see there's an option here to create an alert look at the events for the whole of this week you can see they just appear well here very organized you can even see yeah yeah you can see does this small icons like this small icon shows that this one is a report we're expecting this small icon here shows that's another report this small icon here shows that's a speech we're expecting and then this small icon here shows that's a preliminary release it's very user friendly this calendar gives a lot of info without without showing it when you look at this calendar it's just giving a lot of info without you having to know which is which especially here you can see this euro it shows the currency pair that will be affected this is the euro but for the eurozone since there are many countries there there's a flag here to show which yeah you can see it's showing that's that's the flag for france japan that's the flag for japan euro that's the flag for the eurozone yeah, this calendar is usually very good and for beginners i would recommend it and as you can see here it's not just the economic calendar there's even a calendar for holidays there's a calendar for earnings especially right now it's the earnings week but i usually do not use these other calendars i just use the economic calendar since this is the best one this yeah their economic calendar is really good and this is what i would advise anyone to use you can see here there's even a legend showing if you see a release to the speaker that means it's the speech the p means it's a preliminary release revised release this is if the release comes out and then the previous data here changes i don't know if i can check that right now let's go to last yeah let's do that mm -hmm. yep here as you can see this once a release shows a dotted line below it means there was a revision yeah even if a dotted line below with red means the number was revised lower the previous number was revised lower and if it's a dotted line but in green but the number is in gray it means the number was revised higher continuing uh-huh this release now okay let's filter this to show even the moderate impact releases and this week yeah this calendar as i observed as i showed in the previous when we were looking at this other one this name is supposed to be clickable as you can see on this calendar there's even no flag so you cannot see which is which it's not easy to tell which country is which one that's very wrong it's not supposed to be like that then okay back to here as you can see these names these are links let's look at the fed interest rate decision for example once you click that it opens into a new tab such that you can easily come back here and look at other releases as well for this one to load yeah it's done yeah as you can see fred interested decision is a short description about what this release is and there's the data here of the latest release actual 5.25 percent forecast that one previous that one importance high importance country for the u.s currency u.s dollar and the source this is also very important the source as you can see once you click that it opens into a new website where 
This is the official Federal Reserve website where the, that data is released. Coming back here, as you can see, there is a chart to show the the, the rate, the historical rate hikes, how they how the dates align. As you could here you can set according to the scale you want. You, let's say you want to see the release for the current year. You can just zoom in and yeah. It's good it's good enough like this. You can see this is showing the historical chart of how these rate hikes come and yeah, they end there and you can set here quick set one year, two year, five year, yeah. And you can set if you want to see the line chart or the candlesticks, which is very which is very user friendly. Then below here you can see the actual forecast in the previous and even future events. So this is something that makes this calendar very good very user friendly to use especially since if you want to keep multiple tabs open just come back here and yeah continuing now let's go to okay this calendar I, the people who use this one i don't know what's going on in your mind but you should definitely shouldn't use this one another great calendar is trading economics this is the best of all calendars I have ever used. This is by far the best, and you will see why. Um, yeah, it's a lot like the investing.com calendar in terms of organization and how the releases have been outlined. It's a lot, they're kind of similar. Yeah, you can see here on date, you can set today, tomorrow, this week, next week, this month, yesterday, previous week, previous month. This has a lot. This calendar has a lot more options to choose as opposed to this one, which you can only choose next week, tomorrow, day, yesterday. And if you want to see any other time window, you just have to set the end dates and start dates yourself. Comparing that to this one, yeah, it's also good. But uh, yeah, last week, let's look at that. Oh my goodness. Now you. You have to select last week and then you click apply settings. Pretty weird since you expect this to be responsive, quick responsive. If you click this week, it's just going to automatically start showing you the events for this week. Yeah, very good. And then there's a pen icon there to set the custom date. And then impact, you can see low impact. This this just means it's going to show you events from Low impact to high impact releases, moderate impact to high impact releases, and then high impact releases only. Then the countries, you can see you can select various, okay, the list is very long. You might have a challenge deciding which countries to use. Just, just, just use the default settings. They are good enough. Category. Yes, this is another major advantage of using this calendar you can select if you want to see interest rate decision coming this week you can just select that and you can see yeah the date here we selected this week and the news release we selected interest rate so this is the interest rate decisions coming this week on friday 28th july this is the boj monetary policy report the interest rate decision on thursday we have the european central bank decision and then wednesday fed press conference I'm just showing you how easy it is to use this calendar and then yeah, all events and then the times in here yeah this is very user friendly since you can just select the times when you use preferably this one the default setting is tuned to your specific time zone but I prefer to use the the green which mean time GMT time zone okay so uh, now looking at the calendar itself Monday July 24th if it's in bold that's a medium impact release if it's not in bold that means it's a low impact release if it is if it is highlighted in red that means it's a high impact release wait this chart isn't loading yeah it's no good you can see the flags here there are also flags here just like in this other calendar, there are flags here to show which economy that is, and but for this one, there is none. 
back to here. Yep, as you can see, these the ones I later read are considered high impact releases and they have been listed here the currency that they will affect Germany. This is for Germany. Yeah, here also there's the actual previous consistence and the forecast. Okay, this is the part where I just prefer to not use this calendar, even if it's the best. I read I'd rather not use this one because of it's not possible to see quickly which is which. You just you kind of have to check the numbers themselves. You have to go cross checking to see if the number was above or below the forecast. Unlike in this calendar, where you can see if it's in red automatically, you know it was below the forecast worse than expected yeah you can see are there any numbers in green no not yet if it's in black you can see it's according to the expect according to the expectation but in this case it's black because there was no forecast the forecast was blank so if if it's in red let's just look at calendar here when was that mm -hmm. friday Here we are. If it's in green, that means it was better than expected. The forecast. If it's in green, means it was better than expected. If it's in black, that means it was in line with the expectation. If it's in red, that means it was worse than expected. So you can see this calendar is the most user friendly so far. This other one, yeah, they did a good job here, but still, it doesn't compensate for anything since the releases are just too spaced back to here this calendar gives a lot of data as you can see this is the actual this is the previous consensus and the forecast this is the forecast for this website and this consensus is the market consensus this is the general market expectation and this is the forecast for the trading economics website and then this chart here is an actual chart it's not just an icon unlike in this one this is just an icon this chart is just an icon it's not real time it's not representing anything it's just an icon to show you that you can open the graph there but for this one it's a real time chart it's not just an icon it shows the actual trend of that specific release so you can see here this is the German manufacturing PMI and the chart they're showing yep and the chart they're showing the historical releases for that data yep there is a chart and that chart is really same you can just see the trend in general it's good it's good for that yeah as you can see here the producer price changes it's a trend and it's a downtrend and it's even negative. That's the good thing about this one. Continuing, if you select a release now, mm -hmm. SP Global PMI Monocom say flash. Let's yeah, let's choose this one. Let's choose this one and see. Yep, the summary. This sum for this website, fortunately, this summary gives the slight interpretation of the most recent release here for example you can see the s p global u.s services pmi was revised slightly higher to 54.4 in june 2023 from a preliminary of 54.1 continuing to point robust services performance so there's an accurate light interpretation of the most recent data data piece of that particular release and you can see there's a chart here which is of course very customizable you can select line area columns flying spline area yeah and then you can even select some indicators here averages and yeah there's even a chart here showing related releases and yeah select that you can see there are many related releases to that one and yeah that was it there's a lot of data here about this release this one release in particular you can also look at the forecast the trading economics website this is how they're expecting it to perform and statistics this yeah the last previous unit reference here this is what they're expecting 
and yeah this calendar in general it's a very good one it's considered the best but i would i don't consider it my best because it's very sophisticated when you come to here i don't need to when i come to here i don't need to see all of this i don't need i don't need to see all of this when i come here i just need to see I just need to see this this presentation. This is a very nice one. Latest release June fourteenth, the actual focus previous, and then when I come down here, you can just see all the previous releases of this release in particular. That's why I like this one, this calendar. It doesn't give too much info. Then of course, um, down here there's some news releases, and then this is another very important thing I like to look at. The indices, okay, the small market chart showing real time market alerts. This chart is not just a picture, this is the real chart showing real price action of this particular release. And if you go back here, it's usually very easy for me to check the impact of a release once it has been released. Look at the stocks, these are the major stocks, bonds, forex. You can see major currencies here, and they real-time price real-time price action this is the real chart so yeah this in summary as you have seen trading economics is the best calendar to use but my best is investing.com and uh, this is the worst calendar anyone can use do not even look at this one if you are serious about fundamentals this is just for those guys who like to post hey this is a big week hey we are expecting some major releases today and they don't even understand the releases this calendar is for those guys but people who know what they're doing in these markets usually i've seen them they use trading economics yep trading economics and investing.com or something similar but never forex factory this calendar is for comedians anyway that's it for this video I didn't want it to be very long, but I hope you've learned something from it. Yeah, in the next video, that's where I'll be talking about some other stuff about to do with other tools involved in fundamental analysis. See you till then. Yeah. Oh, oh my God.